Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Roots Learning series recorded within Train Simulator. In this episode, we're going to be taking another look at the freeware Barks and Hants, the Bristol and Penzance route, and I'm going to be driving a journey along the scenic Lou Valley line in Cornwall. I'm going to be driving a full return journey along this route, which will involve a total of three reversals. Uh, the line descends away from Liscard on the Cornish main line for a couple of miles, uh, before the train needs to stop at Coombe and then reverse direction to continue its journey towards Lou. We then reverse direction at Lou for the return journey, once again needing to stop and reverse the direction at Coombe before starting the steep ascent back up towards Liscard. The scenario that I'm using is one which comes with the route, following the timetables of train 2 Lima 77, the 1036 Great Western Railway service from Liscard to Lou, and then train 2 Lima 78, which is the 1106 uh, Great Western Railway service from Lou back through to Liscard. Stops along the way will include the Coombe ground frame for the reversal of the train, and then fast um, to Lou, though when I say fast, the speed limit on this route isn't particularly fast. On the return journey, we will then have an additional stop at Causland Station before continuing on to the Coombe ground frame and back up towards Liscard. The total distance for this journey, with both directions added together, is around 16 and 3 quarter miles. The train that I'm driving for this journey probably needs little introduction to the channel as it's featured in a number of videos in the past. Um, the Class 150-2 has been in service since 1984 and was constructed by British Rail Engineering Limited between 1984 and 1987 in York. A total of 137 Class 150 units were constructed, with 85 of these, which is the majority, being of the Class 150-2 subclass. Each two-coach unit weighs around 70 tonnes and is around 130 feet or 40 metres in length. There is a Cummins 14-litre six-cylinder turbo diesel engine under each coach, each rated at 286 horsepower for a maximum power output of 572 horsepower per two-coach unit. They have a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour, with the maximum speed limit for this journey today being just 40 miles per hour. Okay, so I've just jumped into the cab of the class 150, so let's just quickly uh, go through the setup procedure here. The first thing we need to do is to switch the master key with the shift and W keys. Now that I've done that, I'm going to move the reversing handle to the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to press Ctrl and D to turn on the driver safety device. Press Shift and H to turn on the daylight headlights, and then J and K to turn on the marker lights and turn off the tail lights. And now I'm going to press I to turn on the instrument lights. And uh, let's quickly just have a look at the cab controls here. So, um, very familiar to anyone who's watched my videos before. Uh, we've got a standard West Code three-step brake on the left-hand side. So you've got the release position, steps one, step two, and finally step three, or full service. And generally, you don't want to go above step two uh, when you're driving. So you've always got more brake force available if necessary. And of course, there is a final fourth step, which is the emergency position. Uh, continuing around the cab, uh, we've got the brake gauge there, which is just to the left of the speedometer, uh, the right hand needle being the brake cylinder pressure gauge. So the higher that needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. And when it's pointing to zero, then the brakes are fully released. Uh, we've got a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key, which is just to the uh, left of the, uh, well, left and in front of the brake gauge there. <laughs> Okay, continuing around the cab, um, we've got the GSMR radio at the top there, which I'm not going to use on this journey, because to register on the GSMR system, uh, you need to have a signal number, and there are absolutely no signals between here and Lou. Uh, so as a result of that, I'm just not going to use the system at all. Um, just below that, if we look down here, we've got the throttle control. So that's a seven-notch uh, throttle controller. Generally, you start the train moving in notch three, and then gradually work your way up. So we'll go up to notch 3 until we're doing say 5-10 miles per hour then increase to notch 5 uh, to continue accelerating um, probably actually notch 3 to 5 rather than 10 and then we go up to notch 5 and then finally up to notch 7 probably somewhere between 10 and 15 miles per hour um, so the final thing that you need to do is set the destination display on the outside of the train which I've already done for this video uh, so now that we've set up the train let's just take another look outside and then depart and head out on our journey out towards Lou.
As we depart away from Liskard here, the speed limit is just five miles per hour, so I've immediately shut off the power once we reached five. So I went into notch three of power to accelerate and then shut off the power as soon as we reached five miles per hour. And we've got just under two miles to go to the reversing point at the Coup number one ground frame. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast at 5 miles per hour for now. We're actually not going to need any power whatsoever between here and Coombe due to the very steep downgrades that will be coming up shortly. Um, there will be a speed change uh, in a moment uh, with an increase in the speed limit up towards 25 miles per hour. So we're just coming up on the 25 speed post now. Uh, this is also the start of the downgrade, uh, which gets um, as steep as 1 in 40, I believe it is, uh, between here and the reversing point. You can accelerate up towards 25 just as we reach the end of this right-hand curve. As the downgrade is starting, I'm just going to use some brakes just to ensure that we don't exceed the speed limit until the rear of the train has cleared the 25 speed post. And the rear should now be clear, so I'm just going to allow the train to coast up to 25. So we just passed the AWS warning with a cross uh, sign on the left, which means that the AWS warning is for the opposite direction. Now that we've reached 25, I'm going to use the brakes to control our speed and try and hold us at between 20 and 25. As you can see, we're accelerating pretty rapidly uh, on this downward grade here. The grade will steepen further in a short distance and then um, even the brakes in uh, step one um, aren't going to slow us down all that quickly. At the large overbridge that you can see coming up just ahead, uh, that's where we're going to be passing under the uh, Cornish Main Line, uh, which is the route, of course, between Plymouth and Penzance. And you'll notice that it's quite a height above us, and when we started this journey, we were at the same level as that line, so uh, that just gives you an idea of just how much we're descending here.
We're now passing a fixed distance signal warning bulb, which um, as at that point we've got around a third of a mile to go to the ground frame where we're going to stop and do the reversal. very old style whistle board uh, to the left there that says SW for sound whistle. Uh, I think that that board's probably been there since steam days. So we're now coming up on the junction just ahead. So in a moment when we do the reversal, we're actually going to go uh, along that section of track that we're about to join. So we need to stop just a little bit beyond the junction on this right-hand curve, um, shortly past the boxes that you can see on the left-hand side there. Okay, so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. I'm just going to put the braking up to full service, uh, get the reversing handle to the off position, turn off the driver's safety device, instrument lights off, headlights off, marker lights off and tail lights on. Um, also turn on the driver reminder appliance, uh, although it's not showing as active there at the minute, and also the key master key is now out. So um, now let's just jump to the other end of the train and go through the setup procedure, of course. Driver safety device on, driver reminder appliance off, headlights on, tail lights off, and marker lights on. Um, we're now pretty much set up, oh, instrument lights on as well. And now what I need to do is turn on the uh, mini map here. Let's just center on the player. And now you can just see we've got con manual control of the points. In real life, I believe the guard actually gets out the train to alter the points. So let's just click on the points there, and then that should now change our direction. It doesn't... Oh, it was working. There we are. And we're now uh, cleared to go straight ahead um, over towards uh, Lou. So let's just jump outside the train and take another look just before our departure here. <laughs> As we depart away from the Coombe ground frame, the speed limit here is 25 miles per hour with around six and a half miles to go to our stop at Lou Station and just over a quarter of a mile to go to an upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. I'm going to shut off the power now at just above 20 miles per hour as we're going to be continuing on a downgrade of around one in 160 and the train will continue to gather speed so I will need to use the brakes to control the speed at this point. We're now going to pass a, a warning post for an upcoming level crossing and then shortly after that we're going to pass a 10 and sound whistle post so that's warning us that the speed limit at the crossing itself is 10 miles per hour. <laughs> So now I'm just going to make a step two brake application to ensure that we're down to 10 before we cross the crossing. And then as soon as we've crossed, the speed limit then immediately goes back up to 25 miles per hour. Another AWS uh, warning with the cross sign, meaning it is for the opposite direction. I'm just going to wait just a few seconds now. And now we can accelerate back up towards 25. Once again, I'm going to accelerate to just above 20 uh, due to the downgrade that we're on here. Speed limit's now increasing to the highest speed limit we'll encounter on this journey, 40 miles per hour. And um, we're going to be at 40 for about a mile uh, before the speed limit then drops once again uh, back down to 25. So 
So I'm just going to shut off the power now just below 40, um, just because we are still on a downgrade, so I'll probably still need to use the brakes to control the speed along here. Now coming up on St. Keen Wishing Well uh, Halt, which is just a very small station, and as we pass St. Keen, um, I need to apply the brakes for the upcoming 25 speed limit. So now we're down to 25 in time and the speed limit's going to be 25 most of the way to Loo now with just one more increase in the speed limit up to 30 uh, shortly before we get to Loo. There's going to be lots of small grade changes along this section. I just need to keep an eye on our speed and use the brakes as required to control the speed to ensure that we don't break this 25 speed limit. I've got to say, I love the jointed track sounds on this route. It's something I miss in real life, although it uh, makes me sound old, I guess. I'm not that old, but I do remember there were a lot more sections uh, on the national network of jointed track when I was a kid than there are now, but I do love that jointed track sound, and when you've got a train, especially going at, at quite a high speed along jointed track with the bouncing feel and the sound of those track joints, um, you really do feel that speed. We're now coming up on Causland Station. At Causland Station we had around three and a half miles to go to Loo. And of course we will be stopping at Causland on the return journey back up towards Liscard. 
uh, from Causeland, the gradients are now much shallower, and so uh, we might actually need a little bit of power just to ensure that we don't lose too much speed. Just going to give us a little bit of power now to bring us up towards 25. And now I'm going to shut off the power once again and just allow the train to coast along here. This is actually a journey I've taken in real life many years ago, probably uh, 99, 2000, somewhere around there. I was on holiday uh, with my parents in Devon and we decided to visit Lou for the day. And I have to say, it's, it's just such a pretty little route. And Lou itself is a beautiful little town there. Um, if you travel from Lou a bit further along the coast, you get to a lovely small village called Polpero, which is also really beautiful. Um, I'd love to visit this part of the country again at some point in the future. Um, this route is also perfect for the Class 153 train, uh, which used to run along here, though Great Western Railway no longer operate Class 153s. Um, and people have been asking me to make a video in the Class 153, uh, which uh, is available from Just Trains, but the problem is it's just so dated now by today's modern train simulator standards that I really don't enjoy driving it, uh, driving it should I say, not drying it. Um, yeah, I really don't enjoy driving it. So at some point in the future, I may make a video in a Class 153, but only if it gets a significant overhaul and update. In its current state, I just don't enjoy driving it. giving us a bit of power now to bring us back up to 25. And now shut off and coast once again. We're now coming up on Sand Place Station with just over two miles to go to Lou. And uh, Sand Place Station is around a mile from an upcoming crossing stop board. So there's a level crossing coming up shortly uh, where we're going to have to stop and then sound the horn before proceeding on across the crossing. So this AWS warning is a warning for that upcoming crossing and you can see the uh, post here as well. 
on the left hand side warning us that that crossing is coming up. So as we approach the next left hand curve I'm going to apply the brakes to bring our speed off. I deliberately did next um, keep our speed should I say at closer to 25 because I knew we'd be having to stop in a moment so the train has coasted down to 20. Okay, so we're just going to stop just in front of this post here. And now, um, due to the way that it works within Train Simulator, we're going to have to wait about 10 seconds before I can start moving again. In reality, it's probably a bit less than that, so I'm just going to wait a few more seconds, and then I'm going to sound the horn. And now prepare to start moving once again. The speed limit is going up to 30 miles per hour immediately at the other side of this crossing. As we reach 30, I'm just going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast along here. Don't think we're going to need any more power now between here and Lou Station. What I'm looking out for along here now is a fixed distance signal board, uh, which is warning us of the upcoming Lou station. Uh, so at the, uh, we'll have an AWS warning for this, of course, first, and then I'm going to apply the brakes at the board itself for an upcoming five mile per hour speed limit, which is in force just before we enter the platform at Lou station. So that's the AWS warning, and I can just see that board coming up ahead on the left-hand side. So I'm going to prepare to start braking for the upcoming 5 limit. Speeds come off quite nicely there just in time. And then the platform at Loose Station comes up very quickly after this. But I'm just going to allow the train to coast at 5 miles per hour into the platform. have to say 5 miles per hour feels so ridiculously slow. Even 10 feels better than 5. Oh, well, I guess it's double the speed, but yeah, 5 miles per hour. And we, we use the old joke, it would be quicker to walk. At this speed limit, it probably would. So 
So I'm going to stop here just as the buffer stops disappear and then I won't show you the whole changing ends process again as I've already shown you once and of course we're still going to have to change ends for a third time on this journey uh, on the way back up towards Liskard. One thing I will do at this point though is I will go into the map um, whilst we're stopped. I won't show you the process but I'll just change that point back at uh, the reversing point just to make sure that we don't end up, I'm not sure if train simulator might say you derailed. In real life the train would change the points manually. Um, but yeah, here we are, arrival at Lou, and we should now be stopped in just about the right place. As we depart away from Lou, the speed limit is once again just 5 miles per hour and I've just gone up to notch 3 of power to accelerate to 5 then immediately shut off the power to allow the train to coast. And the speed limit is soon going up to 30 miles per hour as you can see at this speed post here with around 3.5 miles to go to our next stop which is Causeland. can start accelerating up towards 30 miles per hour in a moment just as we reach the end of this right hand curve here. reaching 30. I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast once again. We're about to have an AWS warning which is actually not applying to us. It's for the fixed distance uh, signal board in the opposite direction and you can see that cross sign just coming up on the left hand side there. I'm just allowing the train to coast along here for now. I'm now looking out for that uh, crossing warning sign as once again we do need to stop at the level crossing and sound the horn before we're able to proceed across. So that crossing warning sign is coming up in a moment just on the left hand side with an AWS warning. So I'll apply the brakes to slow down for the crossing as this left hand curve gets a lot sharper in a moment. In fact you can see where it's about to get a lot sharper. see the stop board just coming up on the left hand side just ahead. I was slowing down just a little bit too quick so I just reduced the braking for a moment. Now I'm just going to have to stop here once again for about 10 seconds or so um, just due to the way that it works within Train Simulator. And then in a moment I'm just going to sound the horn. And now we can start moving once again. 
The speed limit's dropping to 25 miles per hour immediately uh, the other side of the crossing, and it's going to remain at 25 for most of the journey uh, back towards that reversing point, though there is still that one mile at 40 miles per hour that we will have a bit further up. Now we're doing 25, I've just shut off the power to allow the train to coast and I'll just give us a bit of power as and when required uh, just to bring our speed up. Uh, the grade is fairly level between here and Causland Station but after Causland of course where we were going downhill before we're now going to be going uphill so we're going to need quite a lot of power especially on that last section, that very steep ascent up towards uh, Liscard. Another AWS warning that doesn't apply to us. So I have to say, this uh, Barks and Hans, the Bristol and Penzance route, the quality is absolutely amazing, especially for a uh, freeware route. It's as good as payware quality. And I love the fact that it's a network, so there's lots of different options for places to drive. Uh, many of the uh, areas you can drive are already existent in other payware routes, but there's also a number of additional areas, such as the Lou Valley line, uh, which doesn't exist in other routes. And it's just uh, great to see that this has been made as an addition. Another branch that I hope to cover at some point is the uh, Gunners Lake branch, which runs from Plymouth uh, up the Tamar Valley, so it's known as the Tamar Valley Line. And that journey also includes a reversal along the way. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to cover that one in another video in the not too distant future. We're now coming up on Sand Place Station with around one and a third miles to go to Causland. going to give us a bit, bit of power now to bring us back up towards 25 and now shut off once again At this uh, stone over bridge that's coming up just ahead, we've got just over three quarters of a mile to go. Um, for Causland Station, I'm going to break as soon as I see the platform ahead, but um, it is on a curve and it's actually quite difficult to see until you're right on it, um, so just be prepared for that. Uh, you can stop in time when the platform appears, but uh, yeah, just be prepared you won't see it until it's right on you.
experiencing a bit of lag here, not sure why, we dropped as low as 20 frames per second. Uh, this certainly isn't a route that tends to lag very much, but uh, when recording of course it does reduce the frame rate over what you'd otherwise get uh, if you're just playing the game yourself. Now the platform at Causeland is coming up just ahead. As soon as I saw it, I made a step two brake application. Of course, the platform is also very, very short, so you do want to stop right up at the end. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we departed away from Causland, the speed limit was still 25 miles per hour, with around 3 miles to go to the reversing point at the Coombe No. 1 ground frame. So once again I've shut off power at 25 and I'll increase the power as required. There's going to be lots of smaller gradient changes along here. And then uh, the speed limit will go up to 40 miles per hour and the gradient's going to get a bit steeper uh, as we head towards the uh, reversing point. So I just temporarily went into notch 2 of power to try and prevent too much speed loss. I'm back down to notch 1. I'm just keeping a close eye on the speed and we'll adjust the throttle as required. So the speed limit's now about to increase up to 40 miles per hour. And it's going to be an upgrade of 1 in 160 uh, just after the 40 speed post. We're also coming up on St. Keen Wishing Well Holt Station once again.
As we reach 40 miles per hour, I need to go between notches three and four of power uh, to maintain that speed. So what I'm looking out for along here now is the next overbridge. At that overbridge we've got around a third of a mile to go to an upcoming 25 mile per hour speed limit and I will shut off the power as we pass the overbridge. The train will begin to lose speed on the upward gradient and then I'll apply the brakes for the 25 limit as we see the 25 mile per hour speed post. So we've just reached the overbridge, I've shut off the power now, and I'm looking out for that 25 speed post coming up just ahead. And now I can see it coming up just ahead in the distance there. Um, the 25 mile per hour speed limit is around a quarter of a mile from the upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit, which is in force for that level crossing that we slowed down to 10 for uh, earlier on in the journey. So we're now passing the crossing warning. I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast for now. I'm looking out for once again the 10 and whistle sign uh, which is just before the crossing just coming up here and then I want to just make sure that I have slowed down for the crossing itself. Uh, to maintain 10 miles per hour on this grade, you need to go between notches 1 and 2 of power. So I'm down to 10, and in a moment, shortly after passing the crossing, we can accelerate back up towards 25. gradient is now up one in 120. Um, we had around a third of a mile to go from the crossing to the uh, stopping point. Passing another SW or sound whistle post and we should be approaching that junction in a moment. So I've now shut off the power, the train's losing a little bit of speed on the gradient, though the gradient's about to level out. And once again I want to stop on this right hand curve just past the grey boxes on the left hand side. And so we'll just quickly um, turn the train off at this end. Jump to the other end and get set up ready for departure. Let's just take another look outside the train before we depart and head out back up towards Liskard.
As we departed away from the Coombe number one ground frame, the speed limit was still 25 miles per hour, with just under two miles to go to the next and final stop on this journey at Liscard. So we're now on a steep upward grade after departure away uh, from the ground frame, and we need to go between notches four and five of power to try and maintain the speed along here. Once again passing under the Cornish mainline, at this point we've got around a mile to go to Liscard. So the grade is shallowing a bit on this left-hand curve just before this concrete overbridge, and it's now between notches three and four of power to maintain the speed. At this bridge, we've got around half a mile to go and just under half a mile to go to an upcoming five mile per hour speed limit. Now passing a fixed distance signal board, at this point I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. We will lose some speed on this upward gradient and then I'm just looking out for the upcoming 5 mile per hour speed board just ahead and I'll brake to ensure that we're down to 5 in time for the uh, speed limit itself. So the train's quickly losing speed on this upward gradient as you can see. And that five mile per hour speed post is coming up shortly after the stop board there. The stop board does not apply to us, we don't need to stop here for now. So we're now down to five. The gradient is leveling at the five speed post, but the rear of the train won't be clear of the post initially. So I'm just gonna give us some power now to ensure that we don't end up stopping and uh, rolling back down the line again or something. 
and now we should be in just about the right place for the level gradient and we should just be able to coast into Lisgard station. going to give us a tiny bit of power as I think we're doing four miles per hour. That one mile per hour might not sound like a lot but when your top speed limit is five uh, that's 20% uh, faster. Um, so to say it'll be 25% faster if you're doing five over four. So the platform at Liskard on the Lou Valley line is actually at a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the um, platforms for the Cornish mainline route. So once again here at Liskard I'm going to stop just as the buffer stops disappear. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. For the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook at PTG Rail with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. Also, um, if you'd like to sponsor this channel or donate to this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for more information with the link to that also in the video description. And finally, if you're interested in my travel or wildlife photography, uh, then please visit my Instagram page at PTG traveling, which I will also put in the video description. Once again, thank you for watching.